Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. One of Ujjaswami Chinmayananda's guides, his name was Uja Swami Shivananda. The same Swami Shivananda that we're referencing in our Devi culture. We're exploring 18 vital virtues the same Swami Shivananda, whose organization was named the Divine Life Society. That is a lovely name for an organization, the Divine Life Society. And as we transition <coughs> in so many ways right now, from chapter three to chapter four, completion of campaigns, Vijaya Dashami, reflecting on all of us, our time together, it's as if this is the Divine Life Society. This is a society you don't know each other. I don't know some of you. You definitely don't know me. <laughs> Yet all of our efforts are focused on living in a divine way. Feel that you are in a Divine Life Society. Every one of us wants to be better. If you didn't, there's no way you'd be joining Meaningful Mornings for almost 500 mornings, and that too in the morning. When you want to be better in your inner world, then that is called yoga. Me being a better driver, me being a better speaker, it is inaccurate to call that yoga. Technically, yes, but fundamentally, no. I want to be better in my inner world. I want my mind to be better. That is yoga. Yoga means to unite. If you and I are hiking and I need to go higher and I'm being challenged in all of this, if there's someone ahead of me, then they can guide me, correct? They can say, watch your step here or hold on to that rock. We do that with our outer world. We most definitely need a guide in our inner world. This guide doesn't have to have good eyes or strong muscles, but rather has to be authentic and deep because we're navigating our inner world. We are fortunate. We have the most authentic and deep guide in Sri Krishna. He is calling out to us. He is guiding us by describing who we are. First in the relative, that is chapter one. Chapter one's theme is fear. How do I feel fear? Whenever we're afraid, we feel uncomfortable. Sometimes it's specific. I'm uncomfortable because there's a snowstorm. Sometimes it's general. I feel uncomfortable with other people, with what's going to happen tomorrow. Can you all relate to that? That's who we are in the relative <coughs> in chapter two. Sri Krishna guides us to who we are in the absolute. The theme is fearless. And this is felt because right now fearless is just a word to us. This is felt, I'm moving towards this, as being courageous. 
being courageous is the stepping stone to being fearless. Being courageous is no context will hold you back. Not a meeting, not an assignment, not an argument. How to grow out of the relative and into the absolute? Chapter three, the theme is dedication. Dedication. And how this is felt, I'm trying to make this practical, is you feel more resilient, more resilient. A resilient personality is less externally focused and more internally focused. In this chapter, Sri Krishna emphasized repeatedly, let go of your focus on the fruits, let your focus be on your actions or responsibilities. Then one is more resilient, tougher. Chapter three, Ujjaswami Tejo Mayananda told us, is the most practical chapter. And that's why before we began, I asked all of you to invite your family, your friends, anyone who wants to be better. And now that we've completed chapter three, I hope you feel how universal this is. The flow we went through in terms of this being practical and universal is lead yourself. It's almost like dedication is the theory. The application is lead yourself. Yet, we are all interdependent, correct? Even to be in meaningful mornings, there's so much interdependence. And that's why following leading oneself is leading others. Practical, universal. Sri Krishna completed this chapter by introducing contemplation. Please do not think you're now an expert in contemplation. <laughs> He's only introduced contemplation. <laughs> what is contemplation? It is changing your identity from the relative to the absolute. And one way to do this is to be more of an observer. Observe your experiences. Are they going to bring happiness? No. So don't identify with them as much. Observe your equipments. Are they going to bring happiness? No. So don't identify with them so much. The ego thrives on identification, which is why we have to counter this with observation. This is what sannyasa is. Sannyasa means to know who you are not, to help you know who you are. And sharing this more casually, If you start forgetting about the organs of output, input, mind, intellect, ego, this will help you to remember the self. Imagine your brain can only contain so much information, so forget some of it. <laughs> that way you can put in information about the self. <laughs> The Bhagavad Gita is contained within the Mahabharata. The Mahabharata was originally named Jaya. Jaya means to win. Now that we have some orientation towards the Bhagavad Gita, we don't want to win. We want to be victorious. Winning is external. The World Series is happening with baseball right now. <laughs> the basketball season is about to begin. Victorious is within oneself. The enemies that Sri Krishna referred to. Between the chapters of Bhagavad Gita, 
what has been inserted is a sankalpa vakya. Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, Jaya, Vijaya, there's only one message. You are absolute. The sankalpa vakya is um, inserted for two reasons. One, it makes the study of Bhagavad Gita more manageable. I tell all of you, study 700 verses. And I know you will, but if we do this, 47 at a time, then 72 at a time, then 43 at a time, it becomes more manageable, right? Everyone feels the completion that we're completing chapter three. That's the more uh, practical reason. Here's the more philosophical reason. The Sankalpa Vakya is for one to feel grateful that they've received this teaching. It is to be purposeful. Vakya means to speak, to announce. Sankalpa, a promise. The Sankalpa Vakya is you announcing to yourself first and then to others that what was just taught, I listened to it, Ritam, now I'm going to live this, Satya. So the Sankalpa Vakya is a prayer. Why do we pray? Out of gratitude or out of purpose? We forget to pray, so the Sankalpa Vakya has been inserted. You can chant with me if you'd like. We've already chanted this twice. This is our third time. Om Tat Sat Iti Shimad Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastre Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Karma Yogo Namatriti Yodhyaya Try to as if separate these phrases the way I did. What does this all mean? Om Tat Sat. Om, the divine light. Tat is referring to what was just taught in chapter three. What is it? Sat. This is the truth. Where is this truth contained? Iti Srimad Bhagavad Gita Su, in the Bhagavad Gita. Where is Bhagavad Gita contained? Upanishatsu. Bhagavad Gita is contained in the Upanishad. So we have an Upanishad course on Tuesdays. <laughs> we have an Upanishad course <laughs> every morning. Where is the Upanishad contained? Brahma Vidyaya. It is contained in a knowledge that relates to infinity. It's shared with all of you in chapter two, Sri Krishna's first and final teaching is no vastness. Brahma Vidya, Vidya means no. What does Brahma mean? Vastness, okay? Truth, imagine like there's a, a dip, truth contained in Gita, contained in Upanishad, and see the authenticity in depth. What is all of this? Infinity. Now coming back out, this is expressed as Yoga Shastra, a science on development, inner development. How is this expressed? Sri Krishna Arjuna Samvade in the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Prince Arjuna. How is this expressed? Karma Yoga Nama Tritiyodhyayaha, the chapter referred to number three, has the name, the yoga of karma, or the intention path. Did you all see that flow? This is where we are. This is what we're actually accessing, Brahma Vidya. And this is how it's expressed. If you're not connecting the dots, here's the, the connection. 
is that our study is going to continue. This is where I am. This is what I'm trying to access. I come out, now chapter four is going to begin. How is that going to be? It's going to be like this again, correct? Chapter five, like this. Finally, we have to feel that Brahman, that infinity, and express this without Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita ends, yes? For us, two, three, two, three years from now. <laughs> and so my final thought. <clears throat> How remarkable that tomorrow we celebrate Vidya Arambha. Focus of continuation. Arambha means to begin Vidya. Chapter 4. Tomorrow is also known as Akshara Abhyasa. To practice infinity. From inspiration to application. For one week, you have been working on your <clears throat> dislikes becoming likes and your likes becoming love. Any one of you is welcome to share in the chat what you're evolving. Please do not use a specific person's name. I dislike my uncle. I'm trying to like him. <laughs> Shanti. 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 He. He's safe. He's sound. He's serene. He happy.